Watch well, you guys, today we're going to be taking a look at things you should do before installing a Windows feature update. What is a Windows feature update? It's basically a newer version of Windows, maybe Windows 10, let's talk about 2004 or 20H1 or something along those lines. So check the manufacturer's website to find out if your system is compatible. That's the first thing you want to do. You can head over to the motherboard manufacturer's website and check your motherboard make and model and it will tell you whether your computer is compatible with that latest version of Windows. So maybe you're considering the free upgrade to Windows 11 from Windows 10. First off, you'll need to make sure your system is compatible and it does support TPM 2.0 and other features that Microsoft require for you to install Windows 11. Yes, there is workarounds and bypasses to get past it so you can install it on older hardware, but we don't know where the land lies until Microsoft make their mind up whether they're going to be stopping uh, the updates for that in the future. You don't want to be pushing out an upgrade and using the bypass method and then Microsoft decide to lock down uh, the security updates and other updates for Windows 11. That would be foolish and you'd have to then go and reinstall Windows 10 again. But if you're on Windows 10, you might want to check out to make sure that it can run that very latest version of Windows. So pretty sure it will do, but it's always best to check. Next, download your current version of Windows. This is important. Uh, Microsoft have a habit of uh, removing older versions of Windows 10. Now, if you're on, say, for instance, an older version of Windows 10, you'll be able to see there's plenty of different versions of Windows 10. Maybe you're using an older version of Windows here. Maybe you're using 1909, and uh, you've now been offered the 21H2. If you don't have a copy of 1909 and you find difficulties with 21H2, you will not be able to roll back because Microsoft don't offer you uh, download links for every single version. Their download links are for the very latest version, and that is the version they will offer you. Now, if you're only a couple of versions back, you might want to download that straight away and keep it in a folder and name it appropriately so you can always roll back to that version which you were successful with and had no issues with. So once you've got the media creation tool downloaded, uh, you want to uh, download the ISO file from Microsoft themselves, and then you can keep that safe in a folder with all your drivers and everything from your manufacturer's website. So I would keep your, um, your literally all your drivers in there and your ISO for that version, which you're comfortable with and happy with, and then you can basically uh, go back at any time. You can uh, download the ISO straight from Microsoft here. Now, another thing to take into account as well, you can also update your recovery drive, which is to help you recover Windows if you run into an issue. If you have created a recovery drive, it's always important to keep that updated uh, with the latest version. Doing these simple things will give you a safety net and help you roll back if you're having issues with that latest version of Windows 10 or any other version of Windows. Now, you can name it appropriately, as you can see here, We've got Windows.ISO, that's what Microsoft call it. So you can call it whatever version it is and then download it. Now, it's no good naming it 20H2 if uh, you're doing it at a later date because it will give you the very latest version. If you want to get all of the versions of Windows 10, you can use a third-party downloader, and this will give you the uh, download links for the exact version that you was using previously that you were successful with, and you can always roll back to it. So all you need to do is open it up, Put Windows 10 in or Windows 8.1 or whatever version you was using and select the version of your choice here. You can see we've got a load of different versions here, 1809, 1803, 1909, and so on and so on. And basically, uh, they're all the versions that are available to you. You've got also Windows 7 here, Windows 8.1, and so on. Windows 11 will be available on there. You can also download Office versions here as well, which makes it super easy. So that is the download uh, the ISO for your current version you're using. Next up, you want to back up your system. It's important to back up your data. Now, if you're running on a limited account and you try to use backup uh, inside Windows 11, uh, some of these features are going to be disabled. You've got file history, you've got backup and sync, uh, your settings and things like that. But these will be disabled if you are using a local account. Sometimes an easier way just to back up the system is to use uh, other software which you can download off the web, maybe Macrum Reflect or something along those lines. Or if you've got paid software like Acronis, you can use software like that as well. Macrum Reflect is free to use for home use, 
you can see here we've got Macroma Reflect 8 and it's uh, free for home users. You can come down here and download it. You will need to have a free license key which they supply and you will need to give them your email address and they will give you the license key for that free version. You can see it does have Windows uh, PE 11, Rescue Media as well if you're on Windows 11 or if you're Windows 10 it can still work as well. So you can see here you can fill out the information and get your license from them and then you can back up your system using this method as well. You can create rescue uh, disks on here as well, which helps you recover your PC if you're having issues. And again, if you are rolling out a feature upgrade from Microsoft, it's always best to have backups and also best to have the right version that you was on previously. So you can always roll back to that version and have no issues if you are having issues with that latest version that Microsoft released. So many people upgrade or update their system and they end up having issues and want to go back. Now, Microsoft do offer a rollback feature in Windows, but that is only uh, defaulted to 10 days. And again, there's no guarantee that your data will be safe. So never rely on Microsoft to keep your data safe. That's your jo job to do that. So always use backup software to back up to a location, preferably off of the PC that you're using. So you've always got a backup of all your data and that way you can be safe. And Macro Reflect will do a perfectly good job for that. If you want to see videos on Macron Reflect, let me know in the comments section below. So next up, make sure your system has enough disk space. This is another problem that people run into. They use uh, smaller uh, drives, which means all of the data on that drive is pretty much full. Now, Microsoft do require to have a certain amount of free space and uh, Windows 10 requires a minimum of 10 gigabytes. Uh, they recommend that you have at least 16 gigabytes of free space so you can uh, make sure that the upgrade uh, goes to plan. So you can see here, if you've got a red drive like this and there's no space available, then don't attempt to do a feature upgrade because you'll uh, run into issues. It will need to roll back. And during that rollback process, you can end up in a boot loop or end up in issues where you can't uh, go back or forward and you end up with having to do a fresh install of Windows so avoid that from happening. You can clean up space on your drive. If you check inside settings here and go to system and then storage, you'll be able to get a general idea of how much uh, space is being used with your temporary files and other things like that. You can see here, if I click on the temporary data area, I can just run a cleanup on this system and clean up a lot of space here. But if you go into the temp area, it will give you an idea of what data is being stored inside that temporary area. These are areas called your downloads folders, your recycle bin and Windows updates cleanup and things like that. You can see in my downloads folder, there is 190 gigabytes of space being used. Also in the recycle bin, we've got more space being used there. 47 gigabytes. I know it's a lot. And again, if you want to clean up all this space, you can then just run this tool and it will clean it all up for you, which will give you plenty of space to do a safe uh, feature upgrade of your operating system. Now, if you want to use third party software, you can use something like TreeSize, which will root out any sort of hidden files, duplicate files, and things like that, which you can then remove from your computer to free up space. You can uninstall programs and you can remove any sort of junk files from your computer to try and claw back enough free space for you to be able to do a feature update. So, what I'm going to do here is purge all of this and uh, get rid of all this. Uh, junk on the system and free back some valuable space, which I need. Now, if you're on a really small drive, some people use smaller uh, drives like 128 gigabytes or 256 gigabytes, and that can soon fill up when you're keeping all your data on that same drive as well as Windows. As you install programs and things like that, the drive will generally fill up. And of course, nowadays, I would say you should be using something like a minimum of one terabyte for your C drive really, because people do like to fill up their drive with loads and loads of data and uh, programs. And that now has been completed as you can see here. Now, another problem that I see people run into when they do feature up upgrades or updates is that they have their antivirus program running and antivirus programs are becoming pretty aggressive at protecting the operating system. And when Windows is trying to run a feature update or feature upgrade to your system, the antivirus can conflict and cause a problem. So sometimes it's advisable 
to disable your antivirus program during this process. Some people even uninstall them. You can always reinstall it after the fact once you've done your feature upgrade or feature update and you should be then fine. The problem I see with uh, things like this is it's a percentage of people that have no problems at all when they do feature upgrades with antivirus software installed. But if you're one of these people that have had issues with this in the past, it's always best just to basically disable your auto protection here or better still, uninstall the actual software and then reinstall it once the uh, update is been completed. So you can disable it here permanently here or you can uninstall it. It's entirely up to you. I would advise you to do this because I've seen this cause many problems in the past and it's very difficult to bounce back from uh, once you have this happen to you with a conflict like this because it could stop halfway through. Now let's resolve any system integrity issues. This is another problem that I see people do that when they try to roll out updates on their system, they've got issues with their operating system already. And it's important that you try to fix these before you roll out any sort of feature upgrade to your system. Now you can check the integrity of your drive by running these commands here. I'll show you what they are. These are simple commands to run to see whether your system is in good working order. So you can use the dism command to do uh, dism uh, space forward slash online space forward slash cleanup dash image space forward slash check health. And you can run this and this will basically check the health of your drive to make sure that you've not got any issues uh, with your system. And if you've got no issues, then you should be good enough to go. There's another one that you can run to check as well, which is your scan health. And you can see here, no component uh, store corruption detected. It's important that you don't have any issues like this because if there is issues with the operating system and you're trying to upgrade uh, to the latest operating system, and if you've got uh, integrity issues with your system, it can cause major problems when uh, trying to roll out a feature upgrade or update to your system. A major problem I see is when people do not upgrade their systems and they are using an old version of Windows 10, maybe 1909, and now they are trying to upgrade to the very latest version of Windows 10, maybe 21H2, and you're going to run into issues because of the age gap between the two. I've seen this cause major problems. Now, if you are having system integrity issues, you can run the restore health uh, switch to try to fix and rectify that. Next up, switch to your local user account. If you're using a Microsoft account, sometimes it's best to switch your account temporarily or permanently to a local account while you do this upgrade. I've seen problems with syncing and causing issues and other things like that. So it's always best to put that into a local account so you don't have any major problems. You can see I'm running a local account here, which is an offline account with an administrator privileges. And again, all you need to do is switch over to this account. You can always sign back in to your Microsoft account once the uh, feature upgrade or update has been completed. And then you can log back in if you insist on using a Microsoft account with your computer. Now, another big issue that I see people having problems with when doing major updates like this is having background software running or background services running, which is something from a piece of software or a game they have, maybe some anti-cheat or anti-spyware uh, program can cause issues. So go into your startup here and make sure these are turned off. You want to make sure that these are turned off, otherwise you can run into issues. You can toggle these on and off uh, before you do that. And also what you can do is close down any sort of services by going into your task manager and shutting those services down, especially things like this uh, Vanguard uh, sort of riot gaming uh, anti-cheat here this is a, a pretty aggressive anti-cheat and again this can cause problems so you want to make sure that this is not running when you boot up your system before you run a update on your system especially a major update like a feature update it can cause major problems disabling peripherals and external usb devices is also advisable especially things like usb hubs with other types of devices plugged into them you also want to make sure that all your device drivers are installed and updated. Any sort of errors like these need to be addressed before you roll out any sort of feature update. These can cause issues 
when Windows starts hunting for these drivers and it can't find them, and then again, you will have to roll back sometimes. So be very careful when you've got unknown devices and things like that showing up here. Display drivers also is advisable to make sure you've got the very latest display drivers on your system. Don't rely on Windows. Get the very latest ones and check for Windows updates as well to make sure you're fully updated with all the latest patches and fixes. Do not update your feature updates yet. These are an optional update that you normally see on the screen, but just update all of the patches and security updates before you run any sort of feature update on your system. Again, updating your display drivers. Sometimes if you're having a black screen on reboot, try to disable your uh, display driver or uninstall it. And when you uh, reboot, it will give you the Microsoft display adapter driver, which will then probably allow you to go through with the upgrading process. You only need to do this if you have got a problem like a black screen of death on reboot. If you need any more help or advice, you can always join our Discord server. It's free to join. The link is in the video description. You can join on there and ask for some tech help or advice, and we'll be happy to help you. Anyway, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Thanks again for watching. I just want to say a big shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. Your names are rolling up on the screen right now, and I shall see you again for another video real soon. Have a lovely weekend. Bye for now. Thank you.